What's up, everyone? Kevin Allen here, aka The Geek from DFS Army, and we're looking at UFC 288. Cejudo, Aljo. We're taking a look at prize picks. I got some prize picks plays to break down for you. And you know, listen, as always, here's how we're going to do this. Um, I will go through each play. I will explain and show you the reasoning behind it. Uh, I don't try to really use that much of my sort of leans or my who I think is going to win components for these breakdowns. Understand that I'm going very much by line odds and and just my understanding of the fights and how things go down to where we can cover a lot of different bases. So before we get into a fresh ticket, I've got five plays, maybe six. I think it's five. I think I have five plays for you this week. A couple of core plays and then some leans. As usual, uh, let's take a look at last week's ticket from the breakdown. And we were able to hit, the, and I'm not counting the taco. I added that to my ticket last week, but we hit three of four. And, you know, I mentioned with um, Vieira that there was some concern that it might only take one takedown for him to get where he needs to go, which did wind up happening. Um, as far as... The core play, we had Haley Cowan under 63.5 fantasy score. That uh, came through nicely. Haley Cowan was not favored to win. I said this um, before, and you rarely get that situation. So I was like, even if she wins, I could see her not getting there. But if she won, she would have gotten there. She would have surpassed the score. But certainly, she could have not gotten there. There was a scenario. But she wasn't favored to win. And when you get a fantasy points projection on a fighter that's not favored to win or where the line odds flip, that's gold. Um, so we hit three out of four. And, you know, for the play that I put in as my two favorite plays here, Cowan and Julian Arosa last week, they came through. So hopefully you tailed some of that and made some money last week. Now, I've got another one uh, for you here this week. And again, what are we using our UFC plays for? One of the nice things about UFC is we are able to get these plays earlier in the week and you keep it in your back pocket for pairs. That's what I use these for more than anything else. Oh, I don't like UFC. It doesn't matter. These are pairs. In other words, as you're in the DFS Army Discord, right? And Will Lynn is dropping fire plays. And that's what that's what happens in the DFS Army Discord for prize picks, right? Will Lynn, Sniper, they're dropping fire plays. But especially Will Lynn in-game, that's his specialty. He's dropping fire picks. But a lot of times they're in-game plays, meaning there's no way we can get five or six together. It's, it's, it's on a short timer. It'll be like, you got like three minutes to put in this spot. So you grab it, and it's not a pair. It's just a one-off. The key is when that happens, you grab one of these spots and I'll give you my two cores that you can include in pairs. You grab one of them and you're able to take advantage of all these other spots that come up on price picks that are skewed much more than 55 or 56 percent. The usual amounts that we can get on NBA or, or MLB spots where you just can't really do much better than that. So these are the few that are going to be skewed a little bit better than that. Um, if you're not a part of the DFS Army Discord, of course, I suggest getting signed up. I don't know what you're doing. The Proptimizer tool is fire. Of course, the play is being dropped nonstop. Um, sign up in the description below. And if you like what I'm doing here, just smash a like and let me know who what your favorite play is for MMA UFC 288 this week. I'll be going in person, so we're going to do some live betting when we're there as well. But that's a whole nother note. All right, so to get into this breakdown, I'm actually going to start with... One of the main event fighters, both of the main event fighters, but one of my favorite core plays on this slate is Gilbert Burns. More than 75.5 significant strikes. Now, I'm going to explain why, but the first thing, it's important to keep a note that, hey, this is a five-round fight. I don't know, do they even know that? This is a five-round fight. I think Burns could get to 75 in three rounds. So then, let's take a look at the props for this particular fight in terms of the fight time. And I believe this one is aligned to probably go to decision or at least 50-50 to go to decision. So yeah, um, over four and a half rounds minus 130. So the odds makers expect this one to go to decision. I don't need it to go all the way to decision. And part of the reason I'm going with this and not fantasy points is because I don't want to guess on who's going to win. I kind of think Bilal is going to win this. So I don't want to guess on that. But what I, what I do think is Burns is not going to be able to take um, Bilal Muhammad down in this fight. So I expect standing and striking. Now, it is possible that Bilal takes Burns down and, and plays it that way, and Burns doesn't get a chance to put all these strikes on. So, you know, of course, nothing is perfect. Um, Burns, not a high-volume striker, but a lot of this is because he generally is going for and, and achieving takedowns. Um, here in a three-round fight against um, 
Masvidal, he had four takedowns, only landed 42 significant strikes. But if we look at fights where Burns was not getting takedowns, like the fight against Kazmat Chemaev, this is just three rounds, 119 strikes landed, right? Um, in another fight here, let's go against um, Tyron Woodley. This is a five-rounder, 83. Um, never been a high-volume guy, but here's OAM, a three-rounder, 76 significant strikes. So, you know, when the fights are going for the full three rounds, he can get there. More so when he's not going for takedowns or he doesn't get a submission early. Now, like I said, I don't expect his opponent in this fight, Bilal Muhammad, to be taken down. So I think we're going to get three rounds or five rounds of striking unless there's a finish along the way. Burns is not necessarily a super high volume guy. So I'm happy to have the full five rounds to get here. But I feel very, very confident that if we do see five rounds of striking in this fight, win or lose, we'll get 70 over 75. So effectively, this is a play in how long the fight goes. And also Bilal Muhammad not getting so many takedowns that he just stifles Burns the whole fight, which I, I don't I just don't see that happening. So Burns over 75 and a half. That's one of my core plays for this card. Um, at the same time, here we have Henry Cejudo, more than 70.5 significant strikes. And this is a similar breakdown. This is a five round fight. And I want to show you this one. Now, this one's a little more risky because there is the chance that Aljamain Sterling is successful in grappling and taking down Cejudo and just stifling him. And that is a real possibility here. So whereas I don't see that for the first fight, I do kind of see that as a possibility here. I wouldn't call it a likely outcome. I'm going to say it's a possibility. I'm going to tell you why I don't think it's likely. But uh, first of all, Cejudo is, it's even odds to win the fight. And the um, over four and a half round prop minus 150, meaning that the props and the sports books say this is likely to go to decision. So we should get five rounds here, or we got at least a 50% chance. So Hudo is really probably too small to knock out Aljamain Sterling. I, I don't see how that happens. I could see Aljo getting a finish on Cejudo. And let's take a look at what the Aljo prop is to end the fight inside the distance. Because remember, we don't care about who wins. We just care if it ends inside the distance. And it's plus 320 for Sterling inside the distance. Plus, that's weirdly, plus 300 or plus 285 for Cejudo inside the distance. So basically, neither guy has super, super high likelihood of winning inside the distance, meaning we should hopefully get five full rounds of striking. So, where is it? Yeah, here we go. Henry Cejudo, significant strikes. So let's take a look at the stats here. And the, there is one very, very important stat that I think will tell the tale here of what I think will happen. So Cejudo landing about four strikes per minute, which is over the course of five rounds. That's 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Okay, no problem, right? We'll get there if we get to five. If we get to four, we should get there. Um, here's the big number. 93% takedown defense. So Aljermaine Sterling is a takedown machine, right? That's what he wants to do. He wants to get you down. He wants to grapple you. He wants to backpack you. He wants to submit you. That's his game plan generally, right? So I'm worried about that. Except here's the thing. A, Cejudo is, Cejudo is not just an Olympic wrestler. He's an Olympic gold medalist wrestler, meaning he wasn't just some college. He was the best wrestler in the world in the most difficult weight class to be a wrestler. And this guy is fast. Yes, he's been off for a few years, but just realistically, the question is, is Aljo going to be able to take down Cejudo multiple times? And I'm looking for any sort of evidence that anybody's taken Cejudo down here. Demetrius Johnson got a takedown against him. That was the only time in Cejudo's very, very long career that he was taken down. And that was Demetrius Johnson, effectively the best pound for pound fighter before Cejudo came along. So I don't, you know, it is possible that Aljo takes him down. It's possible that Aljo takes him down and even submits him. But even if he doesn't submit him, it's possible that Aljo takes him down and can do it over and over again and limits the striking. But I just, I don't know. I see Henry getting back up. I see him. Being in the fight, not a high volume striking battle between these two guys at all. But I think that the most likely way this fight goes down is five rounds of pitter pat, pit, tit for tat strikes. 
And Cejudo being and, and Aljo being the smaller fighters, they could land more strikes and not have somebody get knocked out. 17 and a half is just not that big of a number when it comes to five rounds. So the risk here, when you're watching this fight, the risk is that Aljo is actually being successful at grappling and taking down and holding down Cejudo for long periods of time, and he's just not able to land strikes or he gets submitted. If you think that's the case, you should be betting Aljo by submission. You can get great odds on that. But as far as a play for prize picks, I really like this spot. I think he has a greater than 60 to 65% chance of landing 70 and a half significant strikes in this fight. All right, let's keep it going. I got a few more spots here. And here's one. Um, Rafael Estevam, less than 63 and a half significant strikes against Zalgas Samagulov. And now significant strikes is the key here. And one of the things about this particular fight is what do the stat keepers think a significant strike is? That I'm not sure. But what I can tell you about Estevam, and I've watched his previous fights, I've watched all of the tape on this kid, all of it. And he is a relentless grappler. I was actually considering, where, where were we? I was actually considering the fantasy score uh, for him as well. I think I have that open as well here. Yeah, so I want to talk about both of these possibilities. Fantasy score and significant strikes because there's two ways to go here and I think either one is reasonable. I chose to favor significant strikes, but both are really reasonable and it might actually be better, you know, the fantasy score. And I'm going to explain why. So the way that Estevam is as a fighter, he does not um he does not accept standing. He will go for takedown after takedown after takedown and he is relentless about it. He's not the best at getting them but he is very much relentless about his attempts. And when he's got you down, he wants to backpack you. This is a BJJ guy, right? He wants to backpack you. He He's not just a BJJ guy. He's a BJJ guy that wants to use his jujitsu to win the fight. Um, when it's in striking range, he's just winging bombs. He's just kind of swinging hand, um, trying to get in on his opponent so that he can grapple them, take them down, wear them out, go for submissions. And here's the thing. If any of that's working, and this is why I like the fantasy score better, I'm going to show you how fantasy scoring works on prize picks. A submission attempt is worth five points. A takedown is six. So one takedown and a submission attempt, you're already at 11. And I'm going to tell you something. This guy's going to be attempting takedowns and submissions for all three rounds. Now, it is possible that Zalgas Zamagulas can stop the takedowns and, and just he stifles this guy, and he never gets one. And if that's the case, we're probably going to lose this, this one. But number one, when you look at the odds of the fight, where is he? Esteban is minus 85 to, one, to win. The odds makers firmly believe this guy will be successful in doing what he does. Zalgas Zamagulas is, Gulov is, is a nice fighter, but... He's 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 a decent fight. He gets tired. I cannot see him if if this thing's still going in the third round. I can't see him like stopping takedowns. So takedowns, submission attempts, the win potentially. It's all putting up points for Estevam. And honestly, as I'm speak, talking this one through, I kind of like this one similar to almost more than the other two. So I'm gonna put this one as a core play as well and a pair. Estevam fantasy points, and, and we're going to favor that over the the under. So on significant strikes, just to be clear, I was looking at the less than. And the reason I kind of like this one as well, although, again, I'm preferring fantasy score, is because with the exactly what I just described before is in play. Estevam is not a striker. He just wants to take you down. He wings bombs and then wants to get you down on the mat. And then when you're on the mat, he's going for submissions. He could ground and pound you, but a lot of times the um, stat keepers don't count those strikes when you're in top position as significant strikes. They're just regular strikes, and they don't count towards this number. So for the same reason as I like the over on fantasy score, the under works here. If there's a submission early, both will win as well. Um, I would say if Estevan wins the fight 
the fantasy score is going to kick in because even though it probably would be just a decision win, even though, or, or we assume a decision win, like, all right, what if it goes to decision? Well, there'll be all these takedowns and submission attempts along the way that will get us there. Fight ends early for any reason. Even now, the difference is the under on significant strikes works, even if the fight ends early because Esteban gets knocked out by Zamagulis. Okay. That works. We, we get paid on that one. We don't get paid on the other one. So I like the under on significant strikes. I like the over on fantasy score for the purpose of the video and the card that I'm going to put in that we will judge next week. I'm going to leave it for fantasy score over, but let me know in the comments if you prefer the signal and why tell me why I don't like just hey I like this. Tell me why like, hey, I'm leaning this for that reason. So let me know which one you prefer. And if you have any plays that I'm not mentioning on this breakdown, let me know as well. Drop it in the comments. Like, Hey, Kev, you missed this one, but I think it's really good. And tell me why. Give me the explanation. Without the explanation, it's just a name. I can't give it that much attention, but put the explanation in and I will read it and be like, oh, okay, you're, 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 uh, you're convincing me. I could be convinced. Uh, Marina Rodriguez fantasy score is really easy, uh, really interesting. I, I didn't go with it, but it's an interesting one. And the reason I didn't go with it is because she's got to win and she's only minus 120 at this point to win. Um, Minus 140, there it is. Minus 140, she has to win for that to work, and minus 140 is just not skewed quite enough. Uh, minus 140 is effectively like a 55% when you remove the VIG, and or 54, or 53. It's not what we need for prize picks. It's okay, but it's not what we need. I do think Marina will get takedowns, defended points, but not enough to, to make a difference. So I'm out on that one. Getting back to it. Um, I believe we have two more spots here. Okay. So next up, we've got Kennedy and Chikukwu over 43.5. This one's an easy one. I really like it. Uh, over 43.5 significant strikes. And let's start with the numbers on this fight. So Kennedy and Chukwu, um, minus 180 to win the fight. That doesn't matter to us. All we care about is does the fight and inside the distance or not, um, and when does it end? So the odds makers are saying about two and a half rounds worth of fighting here, which I'm okay with. Now, there is a risk of Kennedy knocking out his opponent in the first round. We lose. Second round, we'll see. But we must avoid the first round finish, and ideally, fight starts round three is what we want. It's minus 145, so... Oh, man, I, I think we can get there without starting round three. I think one and a half rounds of striking has a reasonable chance of getting us there for this prop. Remember, we only need uh, for 43. Now, let's take a look at Nchukwi's, uh historical. Where, where are we? Yeah, Kennedy's. Strikes per minute. I believe he's at about six on average. No, there we go. Yeah, he's landing 4.6 strikes per minute. So just under five. Okay. That's two rounds of striking. 25, 50. We need to get to, we need to get to what? 50, oh, 43.5. So we don't even need the full two rounds of striking here. And Kennedy is probably getting us there. Now, a couple things about this particular matchup. That kind of, I think, skew the odds in our favor. Um, so looking at Kennedy, he's got an 80% takedown defense. Uh, I do think Devin Clark is going to be trying to take him down throughout this fight. Um, and he might be able to pull it off. But, you know, I'm going to put my faith in the guy with 80% takedown defense to, you know, get back up, push off, and keep this fight in striking distance. Now, Devin Clark is not much of a finisher, and Kennedy has shown very little to no, you know, I, I've never seen him even so much as rocked on the feet. Um, he's never shown where he has any kind of chin, so I don't expect Devin Clark to finish him. Um, Clark inside the distance is plus 500, and Chukwe inside the distance plus 140. This is the one that gets us. So the two ways we don't win this one, 43.5 significance, that's a low number. How do we not win? Well, Kennedy knocks this guy out in the first round. We're not going to win if he gets an early, if he finishes him early. It's dangerous to take overs when you have big, uh, scary men 
you know, hit really, really hard fighting in the UFC. Yeah, you know, you're taking a, you're taking overs. You're going to get burned if there's a inside the distance finish. And again, I'm not here to give my sort of prediction. I'm using the line odds as a guide. And and this kind of says, you know, minus 145 to start round three. I think if this fight it starts round three, and Chukwi will have landed 43 strikes by then. So minus 145, but I also think he might get there even late in round two. So for that reason, I like the Kennedy and Chukwu over 43 and a half. And the last spot on the ticket, Jessica and Raj, more than 63.5 significant strikes. And a lot of what was in play for Kennedy is even more so in play for Andrade here. My big fear is that Andrade just wins it too fast. I don't think that's going to happen. Her opponent, uh, uh, Janan Yan, is super tough. Um, Andrade, minus 190 to win. Over two and a half rounds, minus 165. Fight goes to this is minus 140. So we should get three rounds. And here's the thing. When you look at this fight, I mean, you give me three rounds uh, of... of Jessica, I, this is an easy one. Again, I really, really like this one. I'm afraid of Andrade winning inside the distance. But beyond that, um, Andrade is landing almost seven strikes per minute. She is a volume machine. I'm going to show you. Do I have that? Yeah, I'm going to show you her strikes land in previous fights. But it's important to know, you know, Yan Jainan, tough, gets, you know, tough, tough girl. Probably going to last the full three rounds. Pretty good. Takedown defense, probably going to not allow. Like, I don't see a scenario where Andrade just takes her down and wrestles her for, for three rounds. That's not how it's going to go. Or I, I don't want to say that's not how it's going to go. I don't see it going that way. So let's take a look at Andrade when she's fought for three rounds. And how many... So in her in her most recent fight, here, two rounds into where she looked like shit, and she got finished fairly early in the second round. Uh, this was a short notice replacement. She had already landed 53 strikes. Um fight before that she landed 231 significant strikes in the three round decision she's a volume beast uh against calvillo 48 strikes oh she's not gonna get that that was in round one that was round one now when she's taking a beating she doesn't always get there but here's a here's a three rounder against a really tough opponent in rose Namahanas. 71 we got there so Everything about her recent history, here, this one ends in round two. She almost had gotten there. Here's a three-rounder, 92. And th th by the way, there were 10 takedowns in that fight. You know, so 141 strikes landed against Gedalia in three rounds. This is not even, I don't understand this number. Um, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. So we're putting Andrade on there. Over 63 and a half significant strikes. Keep in mind, very, very important that, you know, listen, Andrade can finish her in the first round and not get there. That's that's the scenario where this doesn't hit. But I actually think, again, I, this is core enough to use in pairs as well. So I love them all. I'm trying to think which one I, I, I like the least here. I really like all these spots um, quite a bit. So this is a really good one. I'm going to put this uh, ticket in. This is a five flex, I believe. So... Let's put uh, let's put this one in as a five flex, and I'm gonna pick out. I'm gonna show you how I do some pairs here. So I said I, I really like uh, Burns. I like them all though. I, I really like a lot of these, but I just want to mix them up, get a little more on it. Like, all right, I like this one a lot. I like that one a lot. Boom, put it in. I'm gonna mix and match. I'll put probably what I consider to be two units on the two plays. I put what I consider one unit on the five flex. And I'll put a bunch of these different plays in that are combinations of, you know, two of the fighters that I really like. I will never do threes, but I'll do twos and I'll do fours and fives. And really keeping in mind, very, very important to keep these in your back pocket throughout the week. I don't know that a lot of these numbers are going to change. I think the Andrade one is the weirdest one. 63 and a half six for her. Again, I, I don't get it. She needs to win inside the distance for that not to hit. And Andrade inside the distance, plus 230. I mean, this is a winner. Jan doesn't win inside the distance, plus 700. So it's only Andrade, and that's plus 230. Uh, we got to take plus 230 odds every single time on prize picks. Understand that you're finding NBA plays at minus 150 and minus 155 and minus 160. That's the best you ever will see. I'm talking about plus... 2 230 
That's your only way of losing. Androgen side of distance. So I really love that one. That might be my favorite. I'm, I'm, uh, you know what? Hit me up in the DFS Army Discord. We'll talk about which one we love, like, like the most. Which one we don't? I don't know. Now, if you're not signed up at DFS Army, make sure you're getting in there now. We have our props subscription has the Proptimizer tool, which is the best in the biz and only getting better. We've got so many things planned for the Proptimizer. You guys have no idea. And note that the price will continue to go up. So uh, we're charging way less than any other site uh, that has these types of tools. Although, again, our tool is better. We charge a little bit less because we try to be there for the everyman. And I also appreciate people who take a chance on us early, right? So what I do is as the tool becomes more robust, we raise it. We raise the price a little bit here and there. But when you're signed up at DFS Army, props 20, promo code, you get 20% off. I think it's $28 a month for the Proptimizer and the Prop Sub. It will never change. The price never changes for active subscribers. Only goes up for new subs. So make sure you get in there now because we're, we're continuing to add more and more features to that Proptimizer tool. It is going to blow your mind. It is already and will continue to be the premier tool for researching props, not just prize picks on the other sites uh, that are similar to this. And we have a sports book version working over at the Sharp app. So make sure you check that out. I will see you guys next time. Good luck this week. Let's cash those tickets.